Okay, the last thing we're gonna talk about today is nothing to do with typography, um, but I think it's kind of cool and it seemed like it fit here. And that's to talk about developing projects for um, a variety of devices, including mobile phones and tablets. Um, because P5.js Sketch is just a web page, it means that we can view them on a whole bunch of different devices, including ones that have uh, really cool inputs like touchscreen and accelerometer and stuff like that. So I'm on my computer right now, which doesn't have that, but I do have my phone here. Um, and luckily I can use browser sync to connect all these things together and it'll allow me to prototype in a really easy way um, stuff on my phone. So like I said, I got browser sync started up here. You'll notice that it's using this um, local host address in my web browser. Um, and remember local host is like your computer itself. So local host to my computer is it and its files, um, but local host to my phone would be the phone. So there's no way for my phone to understand um, what we're talking about or to be able to see files that are on my computer. Instead though, we can use this external link here. This is an IP address. Um, as long as my phone is on the same Wi-Fi network as my computer, that's really important. It's not gonna work otherwise. Um, but I've just put it in the browser over here and you can see it, it shows me the same thing. So to my computer, this works the same way. But if I was to type this into my phone's um, browser, I would be able to connect to the same page. Um, now there's a couple ways you could do that. You could open this up and type it in. It doesn't take that long, uh, but because I'm on a Mac, um, what I can do is click here. Now on a different browser, it's gonna be a little different. I can go share, airdrop, and I can actually airdrop this tab to myself. And um, so I can see my phone here and you can't see it over here, but it's, um, well, you can kind of see it. It's opened up now automatically on my phone, which is kind of awesome. So that's kind of an easy way to do that to avoid having to type it in. Either way, it would work. Okay, so now I have it on the screen over here. I have it on my uh, phone. Let's go ahead and write a sketch that does touch input and we can see kind of how this all comes together. Um, so I want to be able to draw some, well, let's first, let's, let's see what happens when there's touches. So um, I can, use console.log. This will actually also show us some problems that we're gonna run to. Uh, no, it's like, so that's not gonna work. So I was gonna say we could console.log um, all the touches coming in, but actually that points to this problem that we're gonna keep experiencing. And that is that um, the console does not connect. So there's no way because my phone's browser doesn't have a console, there's no way for me to sort of pipe it into Firefox here and be able to see it. Um, it can be a real pain there's some ways around that. We'll take a look at that in a sec, um, but that's something to keep aware of. It's kind of difficult to troubleshoot when you're working on the phone. Um, I can't test it here because I don't have touch input, so I'm not seeing the same thing. Um, but maybe actually a good place to start would just be to do a single touch input because that works just like the mouse. Um, so we get this variable called touches from p5.js that gives us a list of all the touch um, that's happening on our device. So I could say if touches.length equals one, so if there's one finger, um, then let's go ahead and just draw a circle there. So I could say fill 255, no stroke and a circle. And then we can use mouse X, mouse Y will be exactly the same here. And then, um, Let's create a variable called diameter because we're going to need that in a minute. And I'm going to make this 300. So now you can see it's refreshing in my browser, but it's not working because I don't have um, touch or I don't have a, a yeah, touch input here. But if I look at my phone, it should have refreshed. I'm trying to do this with the camera and no, well, maybe because it was turned off. Let's try that again. There we go. Hopefully you could see that in the camera. Um, I'm getting a touch input with my finger, which is pretty fun. Now you will also notice that it's trying to scroll here, which is kind of annoying. So let's go ahead and get around that. Um, if we want to avoid that, we add this extra function called touch started. Um, and this is very similar to mouse pressed, but we can just return false. And what this does is it prevents any default behavior for touch 
from continuing on your phone. It sort of cuts that off and just says, nope, that's all we want to do with touch. So right now my finger is accomplishing a lot on my phone. It's not only doing position, but it's also trying to scroll or might be trying to copy and paste text and stuff like that. So now um, if my phone is not turned off, it should auto refresh, which is pretty fun. But now when I do it, you can see my browser window doesn't move around, doesn't try to scroll. It just gives me that finger input, which is pretty fun. Um, but, you know, touch is cool with one finger, but, you know, the real power here is that we can do more than one input. So if I say if um, touches.length equals two, then we can draw more than one circle. So how do we get those individual touches? Uh, we can't use mouse X and mouse Y. Uh, so we could say first is touches zero. So it's just a list. And touch is one. Now your phone is doing a lot of work to keep track of this, to um, try to tell which finger is which and all that kind of stuff. Um, let's then, we can draw these. We can say fill, oh, let's just do 255, no stroke. And then a circle at first.x, first.y, and diameter, and do the same thing for second. Now, this is where having a console would be really nice. We can't see what's inside that touch object very easily. Uh, my way around that is to use the text command and actually display stuff on the screen of my phone, which works pretty well. I'm just gonna refresh this. And now if I do one finger, it works. And if I do two fingers, you can see both those dots here, hopefully. It's a little weird using my phone backwards. Um, and we can make this even more apparent. So let's change the background color depending on how many fingers are pressed. So I could say background here would be like an orange and maybe the background for, um, actually let's make this orange if it's two. And this we can make a nice blue. And then we can try it again. So now it's gray. And when I press one finger, it changes to blue. Hopefully you can see that. And if it's two fingers, it's orange. Kind of fun. And then lastly, we can see if these two circles are touching, if our fingers are close together and we could trigger something to happen. Um, in this case, we'll just have it change color, but you could do, you know, have a trigger a function. Maybe that's part of your interaction is that if two fingers get really close, it, it sets off an animation or that's your attack for a game or something like that. So I can say, um, let's measure the distance between them. Uh, the distance is, we'll just use the distance function, first.x, first.y, second.x, second.y. And then I can say, if the distance is less than the diameter, then we know that they're touching because they're both the same size. So then um, if they're close enough, let's make them like a yellow color. Otherwise, we'll make them white. And then we just draw them as normal. So let's save that again. And again, we're not able to see it on our screen over here, but I do have it on my phone. One finger still works, two fingers. And if they come together, we should see them. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. Um, they changed color though. Yellow is a little blown out, but hopefully that gives you the idea. Maybe we can make that black instead. That'll be a little easier to see. And now if I have my phone, you can see it auto refreshed. So now I've got two, and if they come together, they turn black. So this leads us to one more thing that I think is important to think about. Um, this works really well on my phone. When I'm here in the browser, I can't do anything. None of this works. So you need to really think about um, who and how your project is being used. If it's really only for mobile um, and it's just truly not meant for desktop, that's fine. You should probably include some kind of like thing that comes up that explains that. Um, but ideally, you're actually not building experiences that are limited by one platform or the other. They might be extended or be cool on another platform, but you really want to try to think about how can I make this work for both, but maybe have cool extras or be a little different on mobile or on desktop or something like that. Um, this is a whole range of kind of design called responsive design where you're trying to like uh, accommodate all these different screens and sizes and devices. Um, it's a really interesting, complicated topic to think about. Um, but 
as you're trying to maybe utilize some of these things, I would recommend just thinking about trying to make sure the experience for desktop users isn't sort of incapacitated um, versus someone who's using a phone or a tablet like that. Um, so this is just like the tip of the iceberg. There's lots you can do with touch input. There's also P5JS offers accelerometer, so you can shake your phone and have something happen. Again, it can do um, device orientation, so it knows if it's in landscape or portrait mode, and a bunch of other stuff. So um, if working on mobile is fun for you, then I would definitely re recommend checking that stuff out and seeing, kind of experimenting and seeing what's possible.